I'm Jessica Zafra. I'm a writer and I travel for material. I'm Pepe Jokno. I'm a filmmaker and I travel for inspiration. We're traveling around the world to find the Filipino connections. This is the flip trip. Previously on the flip trip, we went beyond Prague to follow in the footsteps of our national hero, Jose Rizal. This old medieval city bus is named by Jose Rizal. We journeyed to Litomeritze, a small town in the northern part of the Czech Republic. Our main interest there stemmed from four days in 1887 when Rizal paid a visit to his friend, Ferdinand Blumenschi. At Lito Meritze, we found a bust of Jose Rizal at the mayor's office and one outside a building that was formerly the mayor's residence. We learned more about Ferdinand Blumentritt, who was an avid historian, ethnographer, and authority on Philippine language and culture, despite never having set foot on Philippine soil. He thinks he's born here in Lito Meritze. Also, Blumentritt thinks he was born in the Philippines. Very fate. Beautiful. Yeah, destiny. We went to the most visited site in Litomeritze, the town's ancient fortifications, which has been named not after a Czech politician or king, but after Jose Rizal. And finally, we tracked down Mr. Blumentritt's grave to pay our respects. To the memory of the true friendships of the great humanist Jose Rizal and the director of the Technical Secondary School, Ferdinand Blumentritt. We were told there were other towns with Filipiniana, but to get there, we took the scenic route. In this episode, we drive first to Malada Boleslav, the key industrial center of the Czech Republic and home to the iconic Czech vehicle, Škoda. We then visit Olomouc, where we see a UNESCO World Heritage Site and enter a cathedral where Mozart once played. It seems that nearly every building was the site of a momentous occasion. But first, vintage wheels and a vampire car? That's up next on The Flip Trip. Skoda, the Czech automobile company, was founded in 1895, making it one of the world's oldest car makers. Since 1991, it has been gradually bought up by the Volkswagen Group, and it's now a wholly owned subsidiary. Nice to meet you. So welcome to Skoda Museum. Thanks for having us. You are here. We will show you the exhibition and a few exciting Skoda cars. Now. Great. Skoda is a top car brand in Western Europe, and now the rest of the world is getting to know it. In recent years, it has even gained a foothold in China. Perhaps one day, it might even reach the Philippines. So we are now at the Skoda Museum. Originally, this was the production hall in the last century. There has been cars and engine produced. In 17, we rebuilt it to uh, Škoda Museum. So we are one of the companies, automotive companies, with the longest, longest history in the world. Škoda has been headquartered in Mlada Boleslav for over 100 years. So we took a quick detour to learn more about the iconic Czech car. The Mlada Boleslav plant is a hive of technical development. It's where models are crafted and put into full-scale production. It also houses a museum with beautifully restored classic cars. This is the Voiturette A, the very first car of Laurin Clement, Škoda. They did like 44 pieces of this car, and we are lucky ones that we still have in our collection two of them. It's well, very comfortable, actually. Euro for eight, it's comfortable. It has, it has a gearbox with Try it. three okay. gears. Can they take us both? Yes. It's roomy. Hey, yeah, it is. And what is the mark of a Skoda car? Like, how do you know? I mean, looking at it on the street, you'd say, oh, ah, it's a Skoda. Skoda has been always known for the good quality, roominess. This is roomy. And let's say it's roomy yeah. and a good uh, value for the money ratio. 
that was always important from the very beginning. And uh, can you tell us a secret? Is Skoda going to be sold in the Philippines? Yeah. As you know, I, I'm responsible just for the classic communication. <laughs> I'm not involved to communicate uh, such topics. You never know. But never. you know, there's Volkswagen, there's Audi, so Skoda yeah. should be next. Apart from the museum, we were given special access to the Skoda archives to see a famous movie car. If Back to the Future has its DeLorean, this is what Czechs call the vampire car. From the Skoda Museum, we were brought to the back to a secret depository where we are now in front of a famous Czech movie car. Ferrat, the vampire car. <laughs> It was from a movie in 1982. Which now I am dying to watch. And you know, there's a lot of stuff and only two people can ride in it. <laughs> well, there's space in the back for all the people that he ate. All right. Yeah, it has a digestive system. It eats them in front and then pushes them to the back. And, then and they become fuel. Mm -hmm. I think they just rewrote the movie. <laughs> <laughs> After completing the museum visit, we were taken for a drive inside a vintage Škoda. The Felicia, it means lucky one. Ah, lucky one. We're the lucky ones. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be safe. For of sure. Of course we'll be safe. <laughs> which, you. which coda? Yeah. Okay, now start channeling Audrey Hepburn. Okay. <laughs> I don't have the shades. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Here's something that might be dangerous to your lungs or sanity in Manila. Riding around with a top down. So when point. did this city become the, the industrial center? Has it has Skoda with, always yeah, been with, here? With Skoda, with okay. Skoda, yeah. With the beginning of flowering from Skoda, 1895. So it starts really from that time. So before Skoda started producing here, this place was just grassland. No, 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 it was just a city. But city without, ah, was... city without industry. This oh. city is very, very old, this traditional one. Okay. But there haven't been industry before actually Škoda came. Now we are going to the old, the old, old part, part of the city. On the right side, we have Škoda University. Wow. For engineering? Yeah. And then I guess they go to work for Škoda afterwards. Yes. Yeah. It's like McDonald's University. Oh, la, la. <laughs> Oh, it's raining again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing we're almost done. Okay, it's taking my face off. <laughs> How's the life? <laughs> More of our Czech exploration outside of Prague when the flip trip returns. Our detour to Mlada Boleslav was fun, but we had to move on. We left Bohemia and drove to Moravia and the historic city of Olomouc. While it dates back to the Roman Empire, Olomouc was the center of the Austrian Habsburg Empire. One of its notable visitors was Mozart, who finished his sixth symphony here. Today, it's the sixth largest city in the Czech Republic, with over 100,000 residents. We met our guide and took a walking tour of Olomouc. We strolled through a lovely park and found ourselves in the university area. Here we learned that nearly every building was the site of a historical event. So welcome to university. It's my old alma mater. Now university is really so vivid. Uh, when I studied, there were just like several thousand students. Today, 23,000 students and you can admire these lovely buildings. It's so easy to get lost when you are inside because you can observe nature. And uh, really, I would say definitely for me, uh, this is the most beautiful university in our country. This is the Church of the Virgin Mary of the Snow. Now many churches have many pipe organs, but few can claim to have pipe organs that were played by Mozart. We're inside University Church, and right in front of me is a pipe organ from the year 1840, and it's a pipe organ that Mozart once played. So the steps that we walked up here, those are steps that Mozart once walked, and I, I can't believe it. Thank you. 
After a few minutes of walking, we found ourselves at the Holy Trinity Column. This structure was built to mark the end of one of those terrible plagues that periodically decimated the population of Europe. It features the largest group of Baroque statues in Central Europe and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Well, this is big. Yeah, it's huge. I agree with you. 32 meters, the highest plague column of its kind in Europe. You said plague column. Plague column. Does that mean that it was made to yes. commemorate the at the, the beginning death? it was mentioned to commemorate the victims of the plague epidemic, but at the end it became huge and they even changed the saints here. So this is much more like the Olomouc heaven because uh, instead of the traditional plague saints, you will find here Cyril Methodius, Wenzel's Adalbert. Oh, so the, the most saints. important Czech saints or Olomo saints. So this everything is a little bit like the culmination of religion here. So this is like the Olomo's heaven. And on the top, you see Holy Trinity. When you said column, I thought it was going to be one pillar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not one pillar. Yes. Another curiosity of this column that you can see a door uh -huh. and there is hidden a small chapel. Time to time they open it on yeah. special occasions, otherwise it's closed. Okay. And yes, it's possible even to get inside, but it's very small. Okay. Nothing it can fit special. maybe the three of us. Yes. yes can exactly. we go in? I don't have key. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, so no problem. <laughs> okay. After all that walking, we needed a snack. Our guide took us to a charming cafe that serves the stinkiest cheese on earth. Allegedly. Despite or because of this distinction, Olomouc cheese is very popular in this area. Granted, it has an old chim sax flavor. I'm scared. <laughs> but whether it's the stinkiest is debatable. It's strong. You want some? Blue cheese or raclette in a closed room is more odorous. Well, actually, it's, it's, it's okay. It's pretty good. Yeah. If you can, you know, forget the smell. Olomouc cheese is delicious and it grows on you, like mold. In a library of ancient books in an old Baroque town lies a 500-year-old map of the Philippines. That's up next on The Flip Trip. we were taken to Olomouc's Jesuit archive. Hello. Hello. It houses an impressive collection of ancient documents. Look these old books. Including one that really surprised us. Wow. Oh my God. How old is it? So, the first print was 7033. This is the second print. And you can see here 7044. 1744, mm -hmm. a map of the Philippines. Mapa de las Islas Filipinas. You have a good command of Spanish because I know that some of you can speak Spanish. You uh, can no, see. No, no, no. I'm just faking it. Uh, for okay. Padre Pedro. Pedro Murillo Velarde. This is the Jesuit who actually, uh, for the first time in the history, uh, put the island. So the first precise map of Philippines. So when did the library realize that they had this map? Uh, they've got the map uh, from the beginning. There were many Jesuit libraries in Moravia. And during the secularization, the old libraries uh, were brought here. Uh, so uh, Olomouc has the second oldest library in our country with uh, many, many treasures uh, because uh, they put uh, old stuff together in 18th century. How did this map surface? I think that it was from the very beginning. They always knew. Yes. Always knew. There are, for example, other maps that were discovered recently because sometimes you have like the old books and you open it and there is <laughs> some old map and so, but this is not like the new discovery. So it's just a curiosity because we knew that we have this map of Philippines. So it was much more like rediscovered in Philippines than in our country. We knew that we have it so here. So if I suddenly turn off the light and then roll this up and run out of here, how much is this map for Oh, us? I have no <laughs> idea, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea because probably uh, it's not so precious for us Czechs. Uh, oh. <laughs> <but> it's, <laughs> it's, 
it has much more. Okay, hit added, the light. Okay, <laughs> added value for your Philippines. How did it end up in the Czech Republic? Yes. How Why? did it come from the because Philippines to the Czech like, Republic? Uh, it was like a very cosmopolitan uh, society, Jesuits. There was one of the first Jesuits university in Europe. So even the first professors, they were from Spain. Uh, Jesuits were everywhere all over the world. So not only in Asia, Latin America, Europe. So. It's very specific. There's Tondo, there's Antipolo. Antipolo's there, Bulacan. Yeah. Look, your favorite island, Shargao is right there. Shargao is here. Yeah, I see Cebu is spelled with a Z. Z, but Mindanao is Mindanao. And Borneo is Borde. Mm, and Borneo is part of our territory in mm -hmm. this map. Visayas is spelled with a B, B, Sa. Well, it's the Spanish. But Luzon is also still Luzon. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed how the names are still the same. Yes. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, for 400 years, the names have been... Because sometimes I think we just pull the names out of our asses. But, <laughs> but no, they have actually. always been that. Masbate, Camarines, Albay. Baler, I see, mm -hmm. up in the north. And, and what are these ships? Were they the galleons? Careful, Jessica. If we didn't know that this document is 500 years old, we'd assume that it is a current map. Such artifacts remind us that half a millennium is just a blip in history. We tend to view Filipino history in a vacuum, detached from everything else that's going on in the world. In fact, we are all connected despite the distances between us. We can't wait to see more of these connections as we continue our journey across the Czech Republic. In the next episode of The Flip Trip, we go to Brno and discover that there's life outside of Prague. Cheers, Jessica. From Astravi. Astravi. And in Cheske Budovice, we track down a literal treasure trove of Filipiniana. There you can see books from Jose Rizal, first edition. Uh, the signed first so. editions. Okay, hit the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm touching Jose Rizal's signature. Oh, signature, yes. Uh, for example, <laughs> El Fule Busterismo. Oh my god. Uh, also, I can... first edition. Don't tell me you have the last letter of Jose Rizal. Watch more at theflipship.com and look for us on Facebook and Instagram.